Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. I just burnt my tongue very, very badly on my cup of tea. I feel like... Like, maybe that should be... That could be a selling point on the Keurig machine. Is like, every 50th cup is gonna be way hotter than you're expecting. Anyway, welcome back to the, uh, to the next installment of the best game ever, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. We have to go manhandle chickens. Uh, I kind of feel like 20% of the Zelda series, like by volume, involves manhandling chickens. Like, it's a thing you just can't get away from. And we're not, we don't have to roll across the fields anymore. We're just going to take a nice leisurely stroll down past the riverbank here uh, and make our way to see I don't know what this is usually when okay when Navi flies out like that she's she doesn't want to actually talk to me here yeah like she had a plot relevant thing to say but when she turns green like that she's not gonna tell you what's bothering her you have to try to figure it out usually she's just pointing out like a secret something like, a, a, sp a spot where you can bomb or play an ocarina song. Uh, something of that nature. That's usually what she's all hot and bothered about. But it, I can't imagine in the middle of the river there what it could possibly be. I don't think it's, it can't be anything important because I know the basic locations of, like, all the heart pieces and all the skull tulas and things. Speaking of... Uh, we do want to get 10 skull tulas by the time we get to the end of this recording session. And actually, going up here into Kakariko Village at night is ideal, because we can get all of the Skull Tulas in town before we head off to our next destination. That's actually very, very handy. Will that put us at 10, though? No, that'll put us at 9, but that's fine, because then we can just turn them in on the way back. So, the first Skull Tula prize that we can get which we'll get by turning in 10 Skull Tulas, is a wallet that allows us to hold twice as many rupees. It'll hold up to 200. Whereas right now we can only hold 99. And that'll be very helpful for us when the time comes. There's going to be one up here, I do believe. And we'll climb up to get his gizmo. Later on, we'll get a boomerang, which, I mean, it's a Zelda staple, and you can use it in order to grab items. For example, you can use it to grab these uh, Skull Tulas, and actually, some of the Skull Tulas you can only get that way. A lot of them are out of your actual arm's reach. But the ones here in Kakariko Village are not. We'll go ahead and talk to this guy. This guy is our the next stage of our trading sequence. So... Malin gave us the egg. The egg just turned into a chicken. We used the chicken to wake up Talon, which let us get into the castle. So the chicken essentially turned into Zelda's letter. This guy's going to tell us how to get a discount on a proper shield, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a five-finger discount. I know where to get a free one. Uh, but he's also going to tell us how to get to the next point in the trading sequence. Now that we've talked to him and opened up that gate... We could go back to Castletown and visit the Happy Mask Shop. And the Happy Mask Shop is a place where we could buy a mask, bring it back to this guy, and... But you, what you have to do is buy the mask from the shop, find somebody who wants to buy it from you, and hope that you turn a profit. And usually you don't. But it's really just a trading sequence in disguise. And then the last... After you've done all the masks... Uh, you get a special mask that lets you talk to the little Sheikah stones that we find around. And this is our last Skulltula in the village. That should put us at nine. And we'll get a couple in the dungeon later. There's one up here in the graveyard, but we're not going to be able to collect it yet. Because, as I said, we do not have a boomerang. Alright, I'm going to see if my tea has cooled down appreciably yet. Wish me luck. 
it was still a little burny. I don't know if it was because it's still too hot for the palate or if it was just residual burningness left over from the initial burn. Anyway, here's Dompe the Gravekeeper. We're going to be ignoring him <laughs> because he's the most obnoxious side quest in the game. The idea is you can pay him to... X-A-Y, X-A-Y. You can pay him to dig up the graves. And there's like an X percent chance that he digs up a piece of heart. It's just random. So if you want to if you want to go for the hundo, if you want to collect all the pieces of heart, following Dompe around and then paying him however many rupees it is every couple of steps is part of what you have to do. I'm going to be ignoring the really obnoxious stuff like that. I'm going to be collecting the stuff that's on the critical path, the stuff that I'm going to need for the adventure, but I do not think that YouTube would be made appreciably better with the inclusion of a 20-minute video of Brick Road following Dompe the Gravekeeper around. Now we need to kill bats. Bats are the most obnoxious monster in the game, easily, because they love to attack from outside the effective range of your camera, and Navi sometimes does not like to keep track of them. These regular bats aren't bad, but later, perhaps in this very episode, if not the, if not next episode, it's coming up, it's pretty quick, we get to meet bats that are on fire. So, that's going to be great. No, don't yell at me. These are Rededs, they're mummy monsters, and they yell at you, and if they yell at you, you freeze in place. And if you freeze in place while you're close to them, they try to step up and give you a mummy hug. By which I mean they grab onto your back and start eating your face. We're about to learn a song that is very effective against Rededs, but I still prefer to not fight them at all if I can avoid it. YRA! YRA! Oh my god. I think the burniness on my tongue has destroyed my singing voice. So I have to apologize for what just happened there. Mmm, this tea is delicious though. I don't know what YRA stands for. The Yendorian Rifle Association, I suppose. Alright, so we're gonna get out of this graveland the same way we came in. We're just gonna... We're try, gonna try to roll past the mummymans here without irritating them too much. Oh. See, we were far enough away, though, that even though we were in the effective range of his yelling attack, he still wasn't able to... Like, we weren't close enough for him to take notice of us. He was like, oh, I know I screamed and that guy's frozen over there, but it's like five feet away. There's two more secrets in this graveyard. One of them is up top here, but I always forget which grave. So we're just going to start pulling all the graves. And the bad thing is when we pull a grave... Excuse me? Uh... Oh, is the graveyard... The graveyard kid's down here. Okay, so it's daytime now. And there's a graveyard kid down here. Where's he at? Look at look at his stupid hair. Look at this moron kid. I hope your parents are dead and your orphanage explodes. All we'll have to do here is YRA it up. Turn it to nighttime and the kid won't be here anymore. I didn't know he stopped you from pulling on the graves though. That's actually pretty funny. He's one of the mask kids. One of the part of the mask quest is giving it to that kid. Okay, let's start pulling on graves. The bad thing about pulling on graves is if it's not the right grave, you summon an evil ghost like that. And once two of them have been summoned, no more will be summoned. But they do still tend to Ah, there we go. They do still tend to gang up on you. And there's a Skull tool up there, but we can't actually collect it. It's too high to jump. There might be a glitchy way to get up there with Little Link, uh, but coming back with the boomerang is probably the way to the way to be. This man here, all we got to do is get behind him and YRA it up. And 
and it should freeze him as well. Yeah, see, so the Rededs are rendered uh, totally immobile. If you play the Sun Song in their vicinity. And that is our first heart piece. Is that our first heart piece? We got a full heart from killing Queen Goma, but heart pieces work the same way they do in uh, the previous Zelda games. If you collect four of them, they create a full heart. The next grave has... Yeah, this one here with flowers in front of it. We can pull on this one now. Pretty safely. And that guy was like, yeah, go get a better shield, dog. You got, my, my bro back at Castletown will give you a discount. There's a free shield right here. Also, a wall that you can explode. Although I forget what's back there. And we will not be coming back to the graveyard for... A very long time. Actually, that might be Dante, uh, Dompe the Gravekeeper's grave when the time comes. So now we need to YRA the sun back out. And I promised you guys we'd be manhandling chickens. It's time to manhandle some chickens, yo. So, my poor lost lamb over here. The poor cuckoo lady. She's lost all her chickens. So we have to get all her chickens back for her. What a chicken does for you is if you're carrying it, you jump off a ledge, you kind of slow fall. So we can get over here. There's a hole down there I don't want to jump into. Okay, it's over there. That's fine. So we've got this. They're not They're not called chickens in Zelda. They're called cuckoos. Get rid of him. Even though, as far as I can tell, they are literally indistinguishable from chickens in every conceivable way. I wonder why chickens are called something different, but horses are not called something different. So we needed uh, one cuckoo to get over that wall to collect those other two. And we're going to start just throwing all the cuckoos into her pen. The other ones should be chilling back here. There is one. Let's get this far one first. Come here, you. Mm. I have a, uh, a coffee mug that I think my wife got out of one of her loot crates. It is a black mug with a city skyline on it, and when it's filled with hot liquid, as mine is now, it, uh... It makes the bat symbol appear. <laughs> I love Batman. I will not apologize for loving Batman. There's a cuckoo way out here by the village entrance. We're going to go grab this one. And then we have to use this one to get another cuckoo off of a ledge nearby. When I was a kid, I remember doing this little side quest for the first time. And I, th I think she's got like seven cuckoos around the village. And you got to find all... And I found all six. And then I want to say it took well over an hour to find the seventh. And if you're familiar with this game and this particular subquest, you probably know exactly which one I'm I missed. Oh, did he fall down? Are they both down there now? Yeah, they are. Good. Come on, guys. Oh, they're gonna split up and run different directions. You're jerks. The good news is if you're really enjoying the chicken uh, molesting action here. We will have cause to do further chicken shenanigans later in the game. It's going to be fantastic. I'm a simple man of simple tastes. So, I know somebody's going to scroll... Brickard, what kind of tea do you like? Earl Grey, yo. Keep it simple. You know, it's not... I'm not against other flavors of tea. You know, like a, like a fruity tea or... Like a green tea or a chai. Like, I'm not I'm not against any of that. But, for my part, Earl Grey. That's how I roll. Earl Grey with a little bit of honey. I want that bitter, but I also want just that little bit of sweet. Here's the last chicken that took me probably over an hour to find. Uh, you have to roll into that box. You could probably destroy it with other means as well, but rolling into it definitely works. Which leads me to a kind of fun anecdote about a future Zelda game. 
that I know I've mentioned on a YouTube video prior because it's one of my favorite little complaints. We got a bottle! Uh, we done in, we're done in Kakariko now. So, there's a Zelda game called The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, and it's on the Nintendo Wii. In fact, it was a launch title for the Wii. Uh, I camped outside of Best Buy for 13 hours to get a Nintendo Wii. And I already had my copy of Twilight Princess at home, and I was so happy to play it. I ended up not liking Twilight Princess very much, and people will ask me, how can you possibly like Ocarina of Time, but not Twilight Princess? Brick Road, you're a crazy man. So, there's a scene in Twilight Princess. Uh, first of all, I should point out that in addition to the, like, the regular standard Zelda moveset, you know, your boomerang bombs, hookshot, sword, shield, blah blah, what have you. In that game, you can transform into a wolf, okay? So, there's a scene in that game where you're climbing up an icy mountain and you need to get to the mansion on top of the mountain. And there's a section that's too high for Link to grab and hoist himself up onto. But there's a snowbank above this section of wall. And the obvious thing to do here is make the snow fall in front of the wall to create a platform to climb up so you can now reach the high ledge, hoist yourself up, continue up the mountain. Pretty standard dungeon puzzle. Uh, we did it a little bit in the Deku Tree. We're gonna do it a little bit again in the next dungeon. Positioning blocks in clever ways in order to reach high ledges is pretty standard operating procedure for Zelda games. That's not my complaint. Here's my complaint. First of all, XAY, XAY. Okay, we're gonna go and open this door. So I get there and I'm like thinking, what do I have in my inventory that I can use to make this snow fall? Well, the first thing I tried was bombs. Pulled out a bomb, tried to get a good angle, time a throw so the bomb blows up or whatever. This is the best NPC in any Zelda game ever. It's not going to make sense yet, because right now he's kind of emo and upset and just lamenting all his problems. He doesn't like me. I actually came in this room to get fire. So, bombs didn't work. I was pretty sure, at the time anyway, that I had managed to get... Uh, to land the bomb properly. To get it to explode. I was pretty sure I watched it explode next to the snowbank. You know what? No problem. Because in Twilight Princess, not only can you get bombs... You know, let's open up the Goron shop. Even though we're never ever going to shop in the Goron shop. We'll blow up these bomb flowers. Yeah, we'll never have cause to go in there. But why not, you know? Uh, in Twilight Princess, you get bomb arrows. Which basically, it's just what it sounds like. You attach an arrow to the edge of a bomb and fire the bomb forward and it explodes on impact I'm like no problem i'm gonna set a bomb arrow up it's gonna explode when it hits the snowbank and sure enough it did but guess what dear viewers if you guessed the bomb arrow did not work you my friend are correct the bomb arrow did not work Ugh. So, I got stuck there for a little while, trying different things in my inventory to try to figure out what does the game want from me here. The obvious solution didn't work. The second most obvious solution didn't work either. What am I supposed to do? The solution... I actually have to listen to the screen here for a second. We have to go where the music is loudest. And you would expect by now that I have this path memorized, but I don't. Not not to a major degree, anyway. Yeah, that's what we want. The solution was to transform into a wolf. Uh, speaking of wolf... There's one. I'll use all my nuts on you, I don't even care. Here, wolf. Stop it. Stop it. 
Okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do this the hard way. Go ahead and take a swipe at me. Take a swipe at me. Come on. Come on. There's a buddy. There you go. So, you have to transform into a wolf and roll into the wall like this. Boom. That's what you have to do. And when you do that, the snowbank falls and it creates a block that you can hoist yourself up and climb up to the higher ledge. I was so butthurt that I had to shut the game off and not play it for a few days. I could not believe in a Zelda game, which is a game that usually has great, clever puzzle solutions that like bomb arrows couldn't destroy a little bit of snow. Bombs couldn't destroy a little bit of snow. In fact, the only thing that can destroy a little bit of snow, apparently, is a wolf crashing into the wall underneath it. I was so upset. Shoutouts to Super Skabot for sponsoring this video, and to everybody who makes my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.